for like a year and a half, two years, so we wanted to make this in, it's a documentary on, on Evo, but COVID slowed things up and mm -hmm. here we are. Uh -huh, yeah. So we just start off simple, bro. Um, so buy a quick bio on you. Okay. Let them know who you are, age, where you're from. I'm uh, Artemio Sandoval. I'm uh, 26 years old. I'm from San Juan, Texas. Mm, been a barber all my life. When yeah. did you start becoming a barber? Uh, I started at the age of 12, 13 years old, bro. I started to cut hair. When did, um, how did that, like, where'd you find your interest? Or who inspired you to become the barber? Honestly, when I was about in sixth grade, in sixth grade, bro, um, I went to a barber shop. One of my cousins took me. And we went in there and I just fell in love with the, the etiquette of the barbershop, bro. Which barbershop? Honestly, it was um, Chewy's and Chachi's in Edinburgh. <laughs> oh, that was the first That was the first barbershop I went to. Honestly, it was like... That's an OG barbershop. Yeah. Hey, honestly, I think I woke up at like 6 a.m. Because I think they opened at like 7 a.m. or something like that. They woke me up early. We went and I got my cut there. Where did it, where did it, all, where did it all start for you? Like, as far as like, what road did you take to become a barber? I know in high school you were cutting hair, mm -hmm. and how did it talk to me about that? How did that go about? Uh, when I first uh, decided to cut hair, bro, I had some cousins uh, staying the summer at my house, and one day I got a machine and I convinced one of them, bro, to let me get them, you know, yeah. cut them up, and you know I did them a little chili bowl and. <laughs> And the rest was history, bro, to be honest. I remember, like, my my dad, bro, one of the first uh, times he saw me cut hair, he asked me, he was like, hey, bro, he said, hey, uh, what are you doing, you know? Mm -hmm. And I had a clipper in my hand, and I had a model in my chair, and I said... Do you remember what type of clipper it was? Yeah, honestly... Where, where did you even get this clipper from, there? Honestly, it was the clipper my dad would line up his beard on, his beard with, bro. It was called a peanut. It was called a wall peanut. So that was like the first clipper. It, it's an edger. It's an edger. It's a trimmer. You know, just to shaping your beard up around the corners. And that one, I I convinced my cousin and I did his haircut. And then I had to pay for his haircut to go get fixed. You know. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, to be honest, hey, the rest was history. And my dad would tell me, hey, he said, hey, what are you doing? I said, no, you know, see, I'm cutting hair. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, bro. And, and so after you, after you cut your cousin, you're like, you, did you convince? Cause I know you had that uh, the shop in the back of your house. That's mm -hmm. when you would come out here. Yeah, hell yeah. As a freshman and stuff. Um, everyone, everyone in high school looked to your to your, yeah. to your crib. But how did you commit your dad to to give you that spot? You know, because I'm yeah, I'm just shed. I'm pretty sure yeah. you have stuff in there. Yeah, honestly, um, little by little, my dad he told me he said he said if. You know, if you're serious about this, he said, I'll buy you anything you need if you're serious about this. You know, I said, okay. I said, was I first got a uh, first pair of clippers, some wall clippers at Ross. Yeah. At Ross for sale. It was like 20 some bucks. In the section where all, where yeah. all the tees are at. Yeah, right there. <laughs> and the funny thing about it was I ended up eventually going and I said, hey, you know what? If I'm going to be good at it, I have to have a good set of clippers. So I went and I I went to some store, South Tex Beauty Supply in McAllen, mm -hmm. and I bought my first set of good clippers. Uh, bought a trimmer, my edger, and it came out to be probably a total of maybe 150 tops. The way I got the the little shed mm -hmm. was um, a I just you know I was cutting hair in the back of my yard in the sun. We ended up deciding putting a mirror in there and a light, and I made that mind. Oh, so you're cutting hair just, just yeah, like, yeah, just in the apron on. Exa oh, yeah, OG, OG. Exactly, in a in a white plastic lawn chair. Yeah. And then it ends up right there at the little spot I had. I eventually said, you know what? If I'm gonna have to, if I'm gonna go 100, I'm gonna go 100 all the way in. Well, I ended up convincing my. Hey, I started slowly but surely moving all of his stuff out of there. Yeah. All of his stuff out of there. So we actually made another shed next to our shed to put my dad's stuff in there because that was my spot. Yeah. I actually have, bro, um, two big mirrors. I have two big mirrors. They're at least like, I want to say like uh, four by tens, four by tens standing so people can see the full size. I ended up giving a 12 pack to my neighbor for the mirrors. He gave them to me, but I gave him yeah. like a toe pack. Actually, I remember that. Yeah. Like, when you got the mirrors. Yeah. And, yeah. They're still there, right? That, yeah, no, they are. You put something on the mirror, too. 
on, across the mirror. I did. Honestly, so when... tagged it, right? Yes, it was uh, my childhood friend, a uh, brother of mine, uh, Marco Martinez, uh, Tattoos by Marco. He originally wrote my first logo, which was, at the time, Artie's Customs. Artie's Artie Customs. Customs bro, yeah. yeah, that's what it originally says there. It says Artie's Customs, yeah. So graduating high school, 12th senior year, like you already knew you wanted to be a barber. Yeah. So what steps did you take from there? Just I graduated high school on a Saturday, I believe. I believe on the next Tuesday, I was enrolled in barber college. It took about... 1500 hours is what um it is to get a a, a class a barber license mm -hmm. i finished about uh i finished about like in 10 months i finished in about 10 months bro it takes exactly a year but at the time i finished in about 10 months and what was your first job where did you start where did you start working at my first job i started to work at a child's barbershop in uh donna in donna texas oh so i took everything i learned from the people I worked with, and shortly after, I ended up moving to Martin's Barbershop yeah. and uh, South Far, and I worked there for four and a half years, bro. So I decided to to open up this place. Yeah. When did you When did you start knowing that you wanted to open up this place? Like, when did the idea start? When did the idea start in your head? Yeah. Like, all right, maybe it's time to go solo. Yeah. Um. To be honest, bro. Um. My my dad, I want to say back in 2018, back in 2018, my parents, I believe, I believe my parents both retired in 2017, okay. you know, happily retired together and they decided to travel the world. Well, my dad, he, we didn't find out until like about a year later, man, but my dad shortly, he, we found out that after a year he had cancer, you know, and I honestly had told myself I wanted to rush the shop, bro. I was going to rush it. I was going to rush it and open it because my goal was I wanted my dad to see. I wanted my dad to see the shop. You get me? But when I found out, I said, you know, my mind ain't going to be there 100%. You get me? So I said, you know, let's see what happens. And, you know, Sally, a couple months after, like two, three months after, my dad ended up passing away. Um... And, you know, it was a big toll on me, man. But six months after that, bro, I decided, you know what, I need to say, you know, I need to save up and everything because, you know, I have to show my dad because it was, time to make the move. it was time to make the move. Because I remember one thing my dad told me one time I, you know, because so I was debating on rushing the shot because I wanted him to see it before he passed. I had told myself, my dad had told me, he said, have you made your decision yet? And I said, yeah, I've made my decision. He said, what is it? I said, I'm going to make it. You know, I'm going to make it. You know, he said, uh, all right, me behind you, you don't got to worry about anything. That was his response. So. This is why, this is why he's sick. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what he said. And it ends up that, you know, that's all I needed to know. Yeah, you get me? You the, that push. And hey, that hey, it, it, gave me, it gave me the push. And six months after he passed, I decided it was time. I get the writing and rapping as soon as I get in the booth So now I'm rhyming and snapping so hard that I might lose a two Told him it's all about timing and now I'm about to burn the roof I had to rise from the bottom, now you can say I got the juice So now I'm back in the building, I got that shit that make you feel it Got me joking and grinning cause we about to make a killing Even though that I'm winning, I'll probably label me the villain Ain't no crying or quitting, I make the best of what I'm giving I ain't kidding, I'm gripping and flipping, doing what I do They keep on asking about me in the kitchen, whipping up this food I tell them niggas to mind their business cause I ain't in the mood Ain't trying to answer no questions and know that's not me being rude They say they dissing that they in a trap I know that shit is cat They say they got a shred Don't make it clap But half of them is rest They want the truth I give them facts And now they don't know how to act I run it back straight to the back They get the ball and they get sick But me I'm stacked Get on the track Take all my shoes and run some laps They get hit lap They in the back I'm sitting down eating a snack How you gon' catch what you can't catch You can't keep up I'm too damn fast I point and laugh Your shit is trash And I ain't giving you no dab And I ain't tripping I'm chilling I'm telling you I'm on a mission If you shut up and listen I'll probably answer all your wishes It ain't broken The buzz stop barbershop there's a big yellow bus yeah. on the top of those those two words. Uh, what's what, Where did that come from? The the name just originated. You know, my dad, he was a bus driver for PGA. And 
the name originated just because you know the bus stop barbershop the bus stop barbershop mm-hmm. it's buzz but because like the you know original haircut is like a buzz cut you know the mach- the machine the the noise the machine makes the sound mm-hmm. is like a buzzing sound mm-hmm. but uh in the back of it the reason the bus is there is because you know it's a buzz and it sounds like bus stop you get me like a, yeah, yeah. it's a bus stop you know what i mean yeah. i trademarked the name in 2014 i believe i trademarked the name i said you know what my dad showed me what hard work was about man he would go into work every day wake up 4 or 5 a.m and he had to be at work by like 6 so I had said, you know, my dad gave it his all at his at his job for 33 years. I said, you know, I'm going to show people what hard work looks like and I'm going to name the business after what he dedicated his life to. Just, you know, take as a bus driver. How did your dad's death impact your life? Did it impact you in, the, in a positive, negative way? I mean, obviously him passing away is you know, negative, but what, what positive did you take out of that? How did you grow as a person? My dad's passing it told me, I promise you, when I have kids later in the future, um, I just want to be the best dad I can be, man. Because he showed me a lot. He showed me a lot, man. It was a... Was there any, like, uh, negative things, like, that you went through during the whole... Honestly, uh, process? during the morning process, um, when my dad passed... The negative, you know, I was, it was hurt. It was a big toll. Um, well, honestly, my dad, he, he passed away from cancer. My dad passed away from cancer. He had a, a cirrhosis of the liver. They had found a massive tumor in his liver. And I remember we went to, to the hospital at MD Anderson. When we had first found out he, he had cancer, he ended up passing shortly two months after. And... I remember we went, they did uh, some tests, and then we went the following week to find out the answers, you know. One thing they said was um, the best option we ha- the best option we have is not to do nothing at all because it can shorten his lifespan. You get me? So if we started chemotherapy, it could have shortened his lifespan. You get me? At the time... When somebody tells you, you know, the best option to do is nothing at all, what option am I presented with myself? You get what I'm trying to say? Tell me what option that is, you know. But the thing is this, shortly my dad, he passed away two months after. I promise you, those two months were were everything for me, bro. I absorbed, I asked every question I needed to know in the book. I asked it. And I told him a thousand I love yous. I gave him a thousand kisses, a thousand hugs, bro. And I would hug my dad, kiss him so much that he would get frustrated of it. You get me? Yeah. But the thing was, hey, you know, I didn't know how many more I had. I'm, I'm forever grateful for the last two months I had with my father. Because you know, if it if that if chemo would have shortened that up, yeah, you wouldn't have that. You wouldn't have. To yeah. So now, now today, like now, now with everything you have now, the business, opening the business. I mean, your dad didn't see this physically. I'm sure he sees it. Now he looks over you and he sees it from from up there. Um, if you were to walk into these doors right now, and you would mm-hmm. see. What you what you've done, you know? What do you think he would say? Uh, to be honest, um, hold on one sec. Uh, honestly, he'll probably say, "Hold up, can we take a little." Yeah. You get good. Thank you.
I'm gonna re-ask the question. Yeah, you. If you were able to walk in these front doors, see, see what you've done, and see how you started from one chair in your backyard to six barber chairs, what do you think you would? How do you think you would feel? What would we tell you? Right now, I know from him seeing me where I first started off in the back of my house outside cutting on a, on a little plastic white chair to moving into the shed to, you know, completing barber college, getting my barber instructor license, you know, opening a bone shop. I know he would have been extremely proud of me and just, he would have, he would have been, he would have been shocked to be honest. I know he would have always been here at the business if he could have. Retired, he would have been in and out doing, you know, anything I needed for the business. You get me? So, you know, I, I wish, you know, he could see this, but I know, you know, he's looking above me, just proud of, you know, what I've accomplished so far. As of today, like, what's your, what's your biggest motivation now? Um, my biggest motivation is, is my family, to be honest. My, uh, my mom and my brother, you know, they're my, they're my everything. So that's what keeps me going. That's what keeps me going. That's what keeps me pushing, striving for more. And also my, my dad, you know, one thing that, you know, well, on my dad's, on my dad's uh, tombstone, um, we have the shop logo there. And one thing I, you know, that I push myself, telling myself every day is no matter what, as long as I strive for the business, my dad's memory will forever live through the business because he's the, the face of the business. You get me? He, he, he built a foundation and my dad's memory will forever live through my business so that's my motivation to you know wake up every day to cut hair you get me it's just the the thought of my dad's the thought of my dad living through me through my business <laughs>